bringing the people behind our food to life. In all the old publications from about 1930 earl and earlier, they always give very, very precise instructions on how to store your seed corn. And it's always stored on the ear. In some cultures, they actually store them near the fire, up in the eaves. And they do that in order to um, make sure they stay dry and warm. And also the, the smoke adds a layer of tar to the seeds and they're less likely to be eaten by um, crows. You, you preserve the vitality of the grain by leaving it on the ear. It, it retains a very much higher level of moisture, internal moisture. If you were to buy a seed from a uh, seed house, they'd, they'd dry it down to about, uh, oh, I think it's about 15%, 13% moisture. This can be kept around 30%, much higher. Comes out of the ground faster and uh, the, the germination on these is very close to 100% as a result. In the past I've just mixed up the corn, but this year I've decided to separate out the reds and the yellows and oranges and plant them in the field in different places so I get a better understanding of the, the colors and their relationships to one another. And all of these have been hand selected over through the winter. So for that when we first pick them, we go through and pick the ones we like. Then we continue to hand select and now, you know, I'll look through, I've looked through it twice to make sure I've got everything I want here. Um, and sometimes I look for ear shape, good length of ear. I also look for the colors because I want as many really dark red ones as I can, um, just because I like them. And because we're hand um, harvesting and doing all this work by hand, I also look for large ears. I want big ears, long ears. Um, if, you, if I was running this through a combine, I'd be looking for smaller ears that wouldn't break. This process is number one to pull off any small, we're lucky there aren't too many small kernels, but we don't want to plant small kernels. Um, we want nice big fat kernels. Um, it also cleans the uh, seeds so it doesn't foul up. If we have silk and stuff inside the cedar, it can clog the holes and um, then we get skips and problems out in the field. And when you're planting, um, particularly planting commercially, you do not want to have holes in your field because you kind of bought and paid for that piece of ground with a lot of the fuel and uh, fertilizer and as sweat and uh, drip tape and everything else. So you want that field filled. Um, and we'll watch very carefully and if it skips in the rows, we'll fill in those holes. I'm gonna plant the orange first. Why? Because it's orange. Now I check carefully the seed level to begin with so I can make sure that I'm actually putting seed in the ground. Um, because otherwise, sometimes it doesn't, you know, belt is loose or something happens. Um, if something can go wrong with the seed or it will. And then we just go down. You can see this is good moist soil. Um, and I want the seed to get into the moist soil. Um, this will later need irrigation. We'll run a drip tape down. But um, it's always better if you can germinate and have your seed emerge from the ground through natural moisture. It, it, it always is happier. You'll see a little black thing at the base of this kernel. That's called the black line or black mark. That's what happens, that's a cork that forms at the very end of ripening of the corn. And that seals it up so that in the winter nothing can happen to it. And that's a sign of a fully ripened ear of corn, having that black line. That's why you have to eat polenta all winter, so you have the energy to do this in the summer. <laughs>